Okay, as promised, here is my show and tell video about this Continental typewriter. This machine I bought after my period of frantically collecting basically any machine I would see at a yard sale or an antique shop. I was up to 14 machines at one point and then slowly decided to sell most of them again because they just weren't special to me. You see, when building a typewriter, the basic problems you come across are all the same. How do I get the keys to move? How do I get the carriage to move? How do I design the platen and so on? And um, what makes it interesting for me is how different factories came across the same problems and solved them sometimes in an entirely different way. Not all of these solutions are great. Matter of fact, on this machine there are a couple of solutions that I wouldn't really prefer. But that's what this video is going to be about. Showing the special features on this machine, comparing it to my others and uh, judging which is better, which is worse. What really jumps into vision right from the beginning is Although this machine was made in the late 20s to the early 30s, which makes it 90 years old, it already has a cover for the types, which none of my other machines, even from much later, have. Here is the Mercedes, there is the Triumph, here is the Underwood from 1943, a torpedo, and it's only the Adler, which is from the 1960s, which actually has a cover over the types. I don't want to be talking down this machine so early in the video, but let me tell you, this thing is quite the nuisance when it comes to cleaning types, because it doesn't go vertically, it stands up at an angle, and it, this bar here makes it really difficult to get in here with uh, a small screwdriver or something and clean the types out. So, um, although I think it's an iconic design which uh, just looks quite good, they could have made the stop here a little lower so that it would come down further. I think that would have helped it greatly. On the other hand, this thing is rock solid and it doesn't vibrate about when typing, so the lock is good. Some of you may have spotted that on this machine, which is also unique to this one and I have never seen on any other type of machine, the carriage return lever is on the right, presumably to make this thing more suited for left-handed people. That's just my guess. It's a nice idea, but here is the carriage return on the Continental and here is the Underwood for comparison. Notice that my hand immediately went on to the right row. On the Continental, you have trouble getting where you want to get. The motion to push the carriage over is the opposite direction that your hand wants to be in. No problem for a hobby user, but in a professional, you know, secretary or a newspaper environment, it would just not be practical. The big part of the fun of getting a new typewriter is of course getting it running again. This machine doesn't run on standard ribbons. The ones this is made for are wider than the standard model. And so I had to come up with a new idea here. My idea was to make a new ribbon carrier out of brass sheet metal. And what greatly helped me in that is how easy it is to remove the platen on this machine. Just so you don't have to take off the tension from the carriage return string, which I replaced with some fishing line because the old one was gone, there is this very handy catch here, which you just unhook the rope from the carriage, hook this into here, and then you can pursue by removing the screws. Two screws is all that holds the carriage on, really. Then you can lift off the rear and take the entire platen out. 
This brings me to another unique design point, which is the way that the force is transmitted from the key to the type. Most machines use some kind of bent wire in order to transmit that power. On here, these guys are just hooked in. And if you're careful, then you can actually very easily unhook this uh, connection here and replace a type should it be broken or malfunctioning. The underwood just makes use of plain pieces of wire to transmit the power from the types to the keys. Which mechanism is better? Well, let's find out. The best way a typewriter can work is by having quick returning keys. Now on this machine, which is the fastest I own, you can see that even on the sides where gravity isn't that much of a factor, the very outside letters return very quickly to their home row. I don't know how well this comes through on camera, but as you maybe can see, the return of the keys on the Continental is a lot slower. Removing the carriage of the underwood is not as easy as well. You can see it has the nifty return rope catcher here as well, which is more fiddly to operate because you have to get your fingers in here somehow. And the carriage rear rail is held on with two screws only. But you're going to have to remove the front rail here as well and the tabulator mechanism in the back, which is this thing here and it's all quite a lot more involved just to take the platen off. Okay, I've taken the underwood tabulator mechanism off here because it is the most sophisticated of a lot of machines that I have. You can see the brake right up top here is just a piece of felt which is going to clamp onto a rail mounted on the carriage which breaks very nice and smoothly without jamming it against anywhere. And then you notice that there is a series of pushes here. This is so that in a table you can line your numbers up with a decimal point no matter the size of the number. Say you have a number in the tens of thousands range, then you're going to push the ten thousands pusher here. If you're going to have a smaller number with one digit, you're going to push the one digit pusher. And as you can see up here, it moves a different nose or catcher each time. That means the carriage is stopped in a different position and your decimal point is lined up perfectly no matter how large your number is. This is the tabulator row of the underwood. This here is to set a tabulator, this is to delete it, and these here are for reaching the several positions in front of the decimal point. Going right to the decimal point is this one. You can see we're going to 60 on the dial. This is one in front. You can see we're 59. Two in front, 58. And five in front, for example, six in front, just like that. The tabulator mechanism on this machine is quite basic. You can set a tabulator by pressing in the lever here. And you can go to that tab by pressing it down. Now if that system seemed archaic to you, then let me assure you that there are worse out there, like on the Mercedes for example, where you have four tabulators max. These get adjusted by flipping them back, which also disengages them, and then sliding them along here and re-engaging them wherever you like. The brake on here is basically two metal discs wedging a felt disc, and it works so-so. If you disengage all of them and put the carriage right to its end, push the tabulator button, it works alright, but on short distances it seems to not even be able to properly engage until it starts working. Notice that all the braking force for the carriage is carried by this tiny little tab here, and that is why I rarely use the tabulator mechanism on this machine because it's probably just going to break off this tab eventually. I tried adjusting the brake, it didn't work whatsoever. Also notice 
that taking the carriage off this machine would require removing four screws here in the back and removing a weld which has probably been added later due to some sort of accident. The big bonus that the Mercedes comes with is the very easy detachment of the entire keyboard and type mechanism simply by pulling off these two keys and screwing out two screws, placing the platen roughly centered and you can take the entire middle section out and clean it, repair it, whatever you like. The brake on this machine is very nice. You can see the carriage doesn't go out of control. It has a centrifugal brake in the back and that works very well. Deleting a single tab is not possible, unfortunately. You can only delete all the tabs you've set by pushing this lever up here. Which is the same way in which my Triumph is operating. On this machine, you delete the tabs over here and you can see how they're all sliding in. It also has a centrifugal brake, but as you can see, it doesn't work quite so well which is especially a problem with this machine because it has a very heavy carriage. Carriage weight is of course very important when you type a lot on a machine. You see with this machine, when you're typing, the whole house is shaking. And I'm not exaggerating when I'm saying the floor is bumping up and down. This of course also means you have to push back more weight when returning the carriage. On the Continental, however, the carriage is smooth as silk and is very nice to push over. It's a delight to work with this machine. Should you ever snap a band on here and bring, need to bring this thing back up to tension, you can do this very easily by releasing the ratchet here and then just twisting the spring up to tension. That cannot be said for any of my other machines. In one machine I had to drill a hole into a cog just so I was able to, with a screwdriver, tighten it up and on others it is just a tiny thimble with a worm screw which you have to turn basically forever to get up to tension. This one really has the best mechanism of the lot. This machine also has a couple of bonus functions on the side. This one here is basically a right protect which is, for example, for transport, very handy so the carriage doesn't slide about. And then you have, for matrices in copying machines, to turn off the ribbon. Can you see it's not moving up and down. The other extreme is, of course, if you have a two-color ribbon, you can change the color by pressing this button here. The color you're writing in is indicated by this nice little pointer. Pushing it once again makes the pointer disappear and indicate you're writing black. The return key on this thing is on the bottom left. The problem with this thing is that it doesn't have a blockage to only move back one space. If you push this back firmly, you can actually jump the carriage two or even more spaces and therefore mess up your text if you're not paying attention. Margin release is up here. This one is for both margins. This one is for the right margin only. I don't know why these two are separate. I mean it doesn't make any difference whether I release the left or both because I'm just working on one margin but still you know it's a nice addition to have two levers but uh, one would have done the trick this here is your paper release, which works like any other paper release out there. This here is your ratchet release. Pushing it in makes the platen turn smoothly. Pulling it out makes it click again. This here adjusts the distance of each line. The settings 1, 2 and 3 do not correspond with the amount of clicks you give it. 1 is 2 clicks, 2 is 4 clicks, and 3 is 6 clicks. Now I'm okay with the number 1 being 2 clicks because using 1 click usually makes the letters 
interfere with, with each other. However, I like to work with three clicks just as well, which this machine isn't capable of. So what I did was machine a little bushing to go onto here, so that I can now have three clicks like I want to. Over here we have the carriage release, which on the usual machine is going to face straight up. I didn't like that because you're kinda in the way with your hand and it's not really ergonomically. So what I did was heat this up and gave it a 90 degree twist so that now your finger rests in here nicely and you can move it back and forth. The final change I did to this machine was put my own logo up front because the original of the Wandererwerke was no longer existent, not even any remnants, it was just completely black. So I decided rather than have a blank spot over here which looks a little odd, I put my own logo on there. Doesn't match perfect but it's damn near so I'm happy with it. The final handy gimmick on this machine is the hand crank to advance or retard the ribbon spools and change the feed direction as well. This is not standard on all machines but for me who doesn't write a lot this is very handy to have because you can just reverse your ribbon to the very beginning and not have the thing dry out somewhere in the middle should I leave it for a longer period of time. Okay, that's enough waffling for now I think. I suppose you all just came here to see me write on this thing, so um, let's no longer let you wait and actually write a couple lines. Oh, there's that. Okay, that's that. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know in the comments if you like this type of video, me mostly talking and showing stuff. Um, if you're interested in it, I can repeat that, for example, for my blowtorches, just talk you through the different designs and uh, their own personal differences. Um, for now, I thank you very much for watching and uh, see you guys later.